Come on in. What up? Welcome to our Venice Congress. So what's going on, tribe? What's up, family? Uh, for those of you who don't know, where'd my wife go? Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I'm Preston Smiles. I'm Alexi Panos. And uh, this is this the... This is our little new addition, Kingston Raw Davis. Yes. Oh, he's kind of sleepy right now, so, you know, hmm. he's not ready for his close-up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of questions about our lifestyle. And, uh, you know, Alexi and I have become infamous for making these conscious videos out in different locations and things of that nature. Yeah, people are always like, how do you guys travel so much? Like, you must be wealthy, you must be rich. And the truth is, is we've been traveling since, you know, since we could. And we made it work. And we really wanted to shoot videos all over the world to get people inspired to leave their neighborhood and get out and explore. Just jumped on me. Oh! <laughs> but... It's good to have a home base too. And Preston and I were actually digital nomads for a good period of our lives where we were just kind of floating and living in different cities all over the world. And then we got pregnant with this guy. So we decided it's time to home base. Yes, and what better place to home base than Venice Beach, California. Venice is one of the most unique places that we have ever been. Yes. Alexi and I have both been traveling, even in the last two years, what, London, Canada, Africa, Africa Central Australia, America. Central America, Mexico. Yeah, like Canada. we've been so many places and we have yet to find a place that is like Venice. We actually considered like, do we want to live abroad? And truthfully, no place hit all the markers like Venice. Venice has character, it's got style, it's got technology, it's got forward thinking, it's got consciousness, it's got the beach. It's got good food. It's got sunshine. Uh huh. And we can go everywhere by walking, or biking, or skateboarding, and you just can't beat that. There's this neighborhood -y vibe where everybody knows everybody, including the bums or the homeless people. I love them. I'm actually friends with them and know them by name and hang out with them. One of our really good friends who happens to be homeless is a gentleman by the name of Brian. Who, who I think is kind of internet famous now. Yes, Brian is <laughs> epic. Or if it's, a, if it's a girl, should we name her Brianna? <laughs> we bring them food and hang out with them and it's just a community. Everybody takes care of everybody and so we wanted to invite you guys into our home and uh, sort of just take a tour and allow you to see how we live and what's important to us. Yeah, so come on in. We'll start here in the living room because, you know, we're here. As you can see, we have a ton of books and this actually is a poor representation because before we went digital nomad, yeah. we got rid of, what would you say, like 500 to 600 books? Five to 700 maybe. Yeah, books are truly like our biggest investment. Learning is our biggest investment because there's nothing more important than filling this guy. And if you fill that first, everything else flows. Here's the thing, there's so many in here, but I want you to see this because this book I have had for almost 10 years now and you can see it has been eaten to death by a, a dog, which this was my dog Spirit, uh, who ate it because she was mad at me because I left her at home. And of course she went after the book that had most of my juju on it. So, so then I taped it back together. This book has been to India with me. This book has been to Africa with me. This book has been with me for a long time. And this book is none other than Conversations with God, book one. I've got this book for myself to me. I'm always worth the investment on the plane to India, Preston. This, I would say, saved my life in so many ways. There's so many passages in this book that just shifted everything, including one that I still live by, and Alexi and I both uh, do our best to embody, and that is, you cannot have what you want, but you may experience what you have. When I read this line in this book, it, it just shook me to my core, and it reminded me that uh, success, love, happiness is all an inside job. And when I'm vibrating to the frequency of love, then that's, that's what I get to have. I can't have what I want, but I do get to experience what I already have, what I already possess. And that is about really owning how blessed we truly are. Like, we're just so blessed. No matter where you are in your circumstances, if you have life, you are blessed. And so this was one of my favorite books. So this one is kind of my old trusty 
messy highlighted notes all up in it cover falling off one. So Osho truly just doesn't care what people think and I love that because in the spiritual community there's kind of this like hierarchy where you have to be a certain way and talk a certain way and wear certain clothes for people to take you seriously and he kind of called bs on that a long time ago and he set a precedence for what i want to really embody within myself and do my best to embody which is speaking my truth from where i'm at right now and knowing that that's always going to be evolving and always changing and this book trusting oneself and the other completely changed my view on relationships, not just with somebody else romantically, but with myself and what it truly means to love and to truly love without attachment because attachment is not love, it's prison. And this book is all about freedom and how love creates the ultimate freedom. And this really like rocked my world. And then you know I gotta pay homage to my boy. It's my boy. <laughs> Awaken the Giant Within. You can see all my notes in here, all my highlights. 2003, copyright 1991. So I went to my first Tony Robbins event when I was 16. And I used to see his infomercials on TV and think like, wow, that's a young dude who's so in his power who is speaking something that's resonating with me. And I'm from a small town and nobody was talking how Tony Robbins is talking. And it was so impressive that I went out and got everything of his that I could, including his tapes at the time, cassette tapes. You know what's up if you're born in the 80s. Um, and this book just rocked me. And this was the foundation of what started kind of the rabbit hole of my transformational journey. And it led to different programs like Landmark and um, studying different forms of spirituality, science of the mind, um, Taoism, Buddhism, all the good stuff, all the fields. So this is also a huge one. Ernest Holmes, we have the actual science of the mind book. Is that over here, babe? It is. Because here's what's cool about this book. The story about this is pretty cool. So uh, when Preston and I first started dating, I think it was the first time I came to your house. Mm -hmm. And I saw that he had this book in his living room. And I like, I think he was in the bathroom. And I was like flipping through it. I'm like, let's just see if he bought it and it's chilling there. Or if he actually like read it and made some notes. And I flipped through and you can tell when somebody's read a book. Like it's got some stuff in it. And like mm -hmm. the binding's not all pretty. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this dude's actually read this book. I had never met somebody in the male form that was such a nerd about all this stuff like I was. And when I saw that book and that he actually made notes in it and highlighted like I like to do, <laughs> I was like, oh, he's legit. Okay, we, we might be able to keep this thing rocking. <laughs> That's, uh, I got points. I didn't even know that she did that, but. I he got didn't, points. yeah, because this is a very, like not many people know about Ernest Holmes and Science of the Mind. They know about Law of Attraction and The Secret and Course of Miracles, but they don't know that this is like, one of the, the grandfathers of that whole movement. These are the three most important books in this house. There's a lot behind why they are. I'm gonna start with my book, Love Louder. And, and I hope that you can see my beautiful son in the background. He is one of the reasons why I wrote this book. Most of my life I had a story about myself because of dyslexia, that I was stupid, dumb, less than, not as smart as everybody else and somebody who can't read like everybody else surely shouldn't be writing a book. We both got the deal from Simon & Schuster, which is one of the biggest publishers in the world, uh, to write these books. It really just shook me to my core and it scared me. I'm not even gonna lie, it scared me uh, because how this stuff came up about how people may not believe me and they may not wanna buy it and they may, you know, all this other just crap. I kept thinking about not just myself, but the generations to come, not just myself, but the people right now who are struggling with mental diseases or, or things that they've been told that simply are not true. And so Love Louder for me is a representation of what it looks like when you amplify your love. Because that's what I did to write this book. I amplified my love and therefore my life came with it. And so, mm. It gets me all up in the heart space. So this is my book, 50 Ways TA. This is actually one of the publisher copies, so it's not the, the real legit copy. Um, but I actually wrote this book because I got so many people asking me what my daily habits were to maintain a, like a truly happy vibe. People are like, you're one of the happiest, most joyful people I've met. What's up with that? And I'm like, well, I've been collecting information since I was a child and I've been applying it, not just collecting it, but applying it. And these are kind of my top 50 secrets to how to really cultivate not just happiness, but like that inner joy. 
And it's the inner joy that doesn't mean you're always like, oh my God, life is so good. But you can be like that even in the mess. You can find this silver lining even when life doesn't seem like it's going so well. You can figure out how it is actually working in your favor. So that's this book. Mm -hmm. And then finally, now or never. Boom. This was our first labor of love together. This again is a uncorrected proof from the publisher. So it's not the real guy, but. Um, we wrote that in Bali. We did. Riding a scooter. It was an epic trip in Bali. It was. We would wake up every morning and do meditate, make a smoothie, swim naked, naked. in the jungle. Because we had like this amazing pool that was totally private, which is jungle views. But it was just so great because we truly like, again, we like to take time and go to different pockets of the world. And Bali was one of those places that has a lot of feminine creative energy. Yeah. And we just really put our heads down. We had a flow every single day, this amazing vegan restaurant across from Outpost. Shout out to Outpost where we literally wrote this book. Sage was the name of the Sage was the name of the vegan restaurant. Shout out to Sage with the jackfruit tacos yes. that were everything. And then the first the first the, the description you saw in the bathroom. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is really cool. I'm gonna read this to you guys. So I was in the bathroom at Sage and I read this and I'm She was pooping, by the way. Probably, because I had enough time to read this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I read this because I had it in a little frame. It says real isn't how you are made. It's a thing that happens to you. It doesn't happen all at once, you become. It takes a long time. That's why it doesn't often happen to people who break easily or have sharp edges or have to be carefully kept. Generally, by the time you are real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes drop out and you get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to the people who don't understand. Mm. And that's from The Velveteen Rabbit. And I read that, I just got goosebumps reading it again. It's five steps to truly living an epic life. And what we mean by that is like getting real, like being truly free, not just like, oh, financial freedom or the freedom to travel, but free within yourself mm. where you're not owned by the opinions of others, where you're not trying to live some version of reality that society's shoving down your throat. You're real mm -hmm. and when you're real it doesn't matter how you look or what you have or your status or your power it matters how you feel in here mm. and that is truly like the essence of life and that's what this book is about so we wanted to pay homage to the velveteen rabbit and sage because you made it to our intro yep so p and i have a very eclectic vibe we clearly like plants we love plants there's plants everywhere in our place but a lot of our things are collected from all over the world. So you'll see some like random like necklaces and like, what's that? Is that a medicine stick? Who knows? You know, <laughs> people are like, where is this stuff from? And we truly like to collect these amazing little trinkets from Africa, from Indonesia, from Australia, from all over the world, just to remind us of our travels. We don't yeah. like a lot of stuff, but we do like eclectic things that have cool meaning. Exactly. Like for instance, this camera, right? This is a Bell Howe focus this is a real camera that I got from a garage sale at least 12 years ago same thing with this Emerson radio which which I found at another garage sale and I think it could work like if, I, if we actually had the batteries to it um, you'll also find like Polaroids and you know stuff everywhere and exactly of course oh. a reminder to not forget joy yes. because you know if, if you if you're not focusing on joy then you're missing the whole point of life. Yeah. You, you truly are because there's so much to be grateful for. And, and I say all the time, it's not the happy people that are grateful, it's the grateful people that are happy. Our son reminds us of that all the time. Down. Is he asleep? In the knees. There we go. Passing, passing a person. Bam, there it passing goes. Passing a person. If you know me, you would know that I grew up in a Western culture where big boys don't cry, where if it hurts, you hide it. And very rarely, do I, you know, now I do. I cry quite a bit now, but when Alexi and I first started dating, our first year of dating, she got me this, and the moment I opened it, I broke into tears. And one of the reasons I broke into tears is because, call it trauma, call it whatever you want, my childhood, there's only like slices. I don't remember so many things. And because I've lived so many lifetimes and I've done so many things, I don't remember things as much. But if you show me a picture, it'll all come back. You took me to a sushi restaurant. Yeah, I remember it's for his birthday. Downtown LA. And, um, oh, this is a letter. What is that's, this? That's from when you proposed to me. Oh. So I proposed to Alexi at our house, 
and she came up the stairs and this letter was this was sitting on the, the ground on the ground the when she opened the door and then when she came around the corner there was roses all over the white bed and everything else i was standing there in all white playing a song by james morrison called better man which is one of my favorite songs and i always said if i ever when i met my queen that i would propose to her to that song and so but we're at the sushi restaurant and Alexi hands me this and I open it to this and it says our story. And as our I, story. our love story, straight, don't See? Miss the love part. That's, that's the dyslexia. It's not this, just any story, it's a love this story. This is true, this is true. <laughs> she had carefully taken all the pictures and everything because this is when I can, if you guys know me and you've been following me for a long time, right before I met Alexi, I think like a week or so before, I posted this picture and I said I can feel her wifey She's on her way, hashtag wolves, hashtag relationship, hashtag love's voice. So I, I, I knew that she was coming. I didn't know who she was, but I knew she was coming. And I also have this, this tattooed on my arm. But she went through and really just highlighted all the, the beautiful synchronicities that happened over our relationship. Our first date, our first meeting, there was a heart in my coffee and then a bird pooped a heart on my windshield and I was like, Universe is trying to tell me something. Mm -hmm. Don't know what it is, but... This is our first official date at Agape, which we were married by Michael Beckwith. So it was perfect, sort of coming back around. This was the day I spoke on stage, and she came, and uh, that was the day I was like, oh yeah, that's my wife for sure. I answered a question about Einstein, and he was like, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. we're doing this thing. This is a picture I took after we woke up in the morning snuggling. Passage from Conversations with God, book one, one of my favorite books. Yeah, I tagged her in this post. This is when we first started getting together. I was the first person to post about her. It took her a minute to, to like, to, publicly to, to tell the world about me. You him. see how it is? No, you you see how it is? Just be careful. I was out there, like, look, date night with the boo, you know? Anchorman, where we at? Anchorman 2 sucked, by the way. It uh, did. Um, there were some funny moments. Though. Yeah, but we were together. That was the first time you posted a picture of us. Yeah. And we're not gonna go through this whole book, but just know, oh yeah, she thinks that I look like an alpaca. Which is, happens to be my favorite animal. Which is the stupidest thing ever. I mean, look at that, the, the similarities there. Are she just took a picture that kinda looks like that. You look like an alpaca. I do not look like an alpaca. They're the cutest animals ever. Um, and so, yes, this book definitely made me cry. These are these post-its I put uh, all over the house. I put those on. Did you? Yeah, that's mine. Oh yeah, there's your own writing. This one's yours. Just know that our house has a lot of semblance to it. Everything in here means something to us and we, we do our best to be minimalist and there's just certain things that, that you know, touch the heartstrings, so. Yeah, and over here, this is kind of my little workstation here because we normally bring the little rock and play out and got the little bubs right next to me. So this is my workstation where I get it done in between breastfeeding and pumping and burping and napping. All the things, you know, all the things. A few of my girlfriends came by and did a really amazing blessing way before I gave birth, because we actually gave birth in this apartment. Uh, we did a home birth, all natural, midwives went total hippie on everyone. Our parents were not that thrilled about it, but it turned out fine, so here we are. But this is really cool because they, they got to really capture the body, the temple, prior to him being out in the world, so it'll be cool for him to look back on that. All right. Let's head on in. And this is the wall of greatness. We got Muhammad Ali, Nelson Mandela, Love Will Save the Day, Martin Luther King, Einstein, Frida Kahlo, some beautiful original people, the Black Panthers. We got a little bit of everything on this wall. And then this is where I spend most of my time, but really is Kingston's room. But he sleeps with us right now. We're doing, uh, you know, the cohabitation thing for the first few months. Mm -hmm. But this will be where he rocks out. Yep. And then we'll just peek in here a little bit, but this is the office. And then in here we have lighting and studio stuff. And, you know, we work it out. So now we're gonna head into the master. So as you can see, these are our accessories. People always comment on how many hats we have. This is actually a slimmed down version of our hat collection. We go hard on the hats. Do they look good? Yes. But for me, it's more about not washing my hair and getting away with still looking somewhat put together on day seven of not taking a shower. So that's the truth. 
And this is our bed and our bedroom. We chose an awesome bright purple wall. That was kind of in my nesting phase, like the week prior. I'm like, babe, we need to paint the wall bright purple. And he's like, okay. <laughs> and did I get it done within 24 hours? You got it done. Within like six hours. Yeah, we went to Home Depot. We hired a dude, made it happen. So FYI, anybody who has a pregnant wife and you're watching this, just know that she's gonna to wanna to change everything like every five seconds and just roll with it. Now, we do wanna have a special shout out to Bear Mattresses. Yes. Because this thing is the most comfortable bed yes. in the world. And and wait, I can really attest to that because I actually gave birth right here, yep. right where I'm sitting, Yep. is where this little dude, like just, this. just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Something like this, right? Yeah, I don't know if my feet were all the way up like that, but I think I looked maybe a little bit more graceful. Maybe my head I did. Actually, a couple weeks prior to giving birth, I was on bed rest as well. And um, I had a complication, lost a little bit of blood, so I was like sanctioned in the bedroom for a while, which if anyone knows me knows that's like a prison for me because I'm super active and I love to be moving. And this bed actually was part of the blessing of it because I was so comfortable. It totally supported me and it's like the perfect combo of firm and soft. Yep. And actually the cool thing, the reason we picked Bear, we did a ton of research, a ton of mattresses, but Bear actually like rejuvenates your body when you sleep. So it's made for athletes or people who are moving a lot or up a lot. And there's all this technology to like really recoup your muscles while you sleep. So yeah, I, I mean, we're sleep deprived right now with this guy, but I still feel pretty good. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, Bear. Mm -hmm. You win. Yeah, you win. And our little nugget who's passed out right now sleeps in here with us too. So this truly is our family bed. For those of you who have children, you completely understand this. For those of you who maybe want them or one day will have them or was a child at some point. The, 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 AKA all of you. Yes. <laughs> the love that gets transmuted and passed uh, is, is like nothing one could ever describe. And shout out to all women. Uh, and particularly I'm gonna talk about Alexi and how much of a warrior she was, warrior queen goddess for having our child here on this bed with no drugs in our home and being with that single pointed, just intensity. She just handled it so well. And, and I, I'm not sure if you guys have ever seen those videos of guys having labor contractions, but like, <laughs> I don't know if we Wait, can do they, it. No, it wasn't even labor, it was period cramps. Period cramps. And they I can't even handle it and they're freaking out and crying. Yeah, yeah. The labor game is not a, not a punk. And for guys, for those of you who are, have been told, don't look when your wife's having the baby, I say look. I think it's one of the most beautiful things ever. I was the first person to touch him and, and helped pull him out. And it was just the most touching, beautiful thing ever. And Yeah, we cried like a thousand times. Yes, and I think I was cursing uh, yeah, for about half of it. Just yeah. like, oh, it, oh. <laughs> I couldn't stop. Um, I was like, it's a baby, how yet are we there? <laughs> Joey, look at it. <laughs> One of our favorite parts about living here and in Venice and about this house is actually outside of the house because Alexi and I both really love nature and really love being Sunshine. being able to experience it and, and be naked without our neighbors and everybody seeing us. So uh, follow us. This is really one of the coolest parts. Like we mentioned before, I grew up, um, my dad was a gardener, not like by tr profession, but he just loved it, and, and I think I got that as well. So just all the green along the side, and then... And I think it's really important too, if you live in a more urban environment, to surround yourself with nature and plants, because it's a reminder that we are that nature, and I think sometimes we forget with all the concrete, so... Yep. We never have a shortage of that. This is the spot where we meditate and, and read. Sometimes and... work too, sometimes I'll post up. Bring the laptop out here, get a little fresh air, and once he's old enough to crawl and play, we'll have him out here. Adding the turf was an addition that we did that was really important to us, especially with the baby crawling around. And, and, and I like to be barefoot. Yeah, all adds the time. an accent to the place. <laughs> we got bikes, we got surfboards, we got skateboards, we got, I think this is an Australian plant. It's like a kangaroo plant. From the jungle. <laughs> right? One of those. And, and, and then, then we got the upstairs. Exactly. And if you live in Venice, you get to have a rooftop deck sometimes. Yeah, we love 
to invite people over, get the brains flowing and storming. This hammock was one of the nesting additions as well, where I was like, we need a hammock. He's like, okay. I'm like the Amazon queen. I found one for 70 bucks. So I come up here when he's napping. I get a little nap in myself. This is what Preston does. This is the face I make <laughs> as I'm lifting weight. Ah. And this is the face I make when I watch him. <laughs> one of the coolest things about up here as well is that we have power. So we will pop this umbrella, put our computers down and have friends over co-working and hanging out and uh, sunsets are beautiful. Yep, Sometimes. we've got sound healings up here, yep. parties. It's a great place for an afternoon nap to catch the sun. Exactly. Or the hammock, of course. And yeah, this is just like, it feels like a nice little escape. The beach is literally a block down that way, so even if we're like, you know what, we're sick of the roof and we want a little more juju, walk down to the beach, grab a, you know, almond chai from Great White and go for a little walk, get a little sun in. Okay, thank you guys so much. That concludes the tour. We truly, truly appreciate you guys. For any of you who've been with us for a long time and been following our journey and our love story, and now with our new addition, Kingston, uh, we just want to say thank you. Like, it means a lot when we see you on the streets and we get your messages and things of that nature. So thank you so much for, for loving on us. And we just really want to say we appreciate you guys. And we also want to leave you with something. A reminder that you get to create the life that you truly love. Like it doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be opulent, but it gets to be something that makes you truly happy. So. Wind. But it gets to be something that makes you truly happy. Design your life, create it, and live it. Bye guys. Live love, give love. Ooh, ooh.